Some games are designed to emotionally wreck you, lots of times is during the end, but sometimes they're like, mm, not waiting. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 heartbreaking video game moments that happened before the ending. Just as a quick disclaimer, this video contains spoilers. You can't really do a video about the specifics of story events that are, well, important without spoiling stuff, so just giving you a heads up if you haven't played any of the games we're talking about today. Also, we're talking about the heaviest parts of the story in a lot of cases, so I'll try to keep it light when possible, but yeah, it's about heartbreaking moments in the stories. You know what you're getting into, right? Let's go. Starting off at number 10. In Gears of War 2, Dominic Santiago, also known as Dom, has basically looked for his wife Maria for a long time. And when he eventually finds her, she'd been tortured and lobotomized and, well, was not in good shape. Both Dom and Marcus Phoenix realize the gravity of the situation, and Marcus let Dom have some privacy to, unfortunately, and incredibly sadly, put her out of her misery. It's not a moment you walk away satisfied from, but it does sort of imprint the cost of war in a way the good guys versus bad guys action, whether it's in Gears of War or any video game, often really doesn't. You're rewarded for performing well in those parts of the game, but here, war sucks. Moving on to number nine, the opening story in Firewatch. Now, the first few moments of the game, you're basically presented with a few different choices, not necessarily ones that change the events of the intro, but are more there to kind of get you emotionally involved and feel like you're putting your personality into the game a bit. This is because it's about the main character meeting his wife, getting married, and then over the course of time, her developing early onset dementia. And the choices obviously don't stop that. You can't stop that. And this game just aims to absolutely just totally wreck you before you even start playing it. All of the choices basically suck. It gives you this like gut-wrenching music and you basically have to deal with this person that they initially get you sort of emotionally invested in by, like I said, using choices that input your personality into the situation a bit and then immediately just yanking them right back saying, mm -mm. it's actually kind of amazing how quickly it gets you invested in something and then devastates you over it. But Firewatch is actually one of the best narration driven games out there. It has such a great story to tell about paranoia and loneliness, and it builds it on top of like some of the most emotionally devastating stuff you're gonna see in 12 minutes. Coming in at number eight is George's death in Halo Reach, one of those noble sacrifices, actually very literally, as George was part of the noble team. Very on the nose name, however, the way he goes out is absolutely one of those times where you have to understand that person explicitly chose to die for lots of people to live. They were performing what was basically a complicated mission using a slip space bomb with the intent of commandeering a smaller ship which would then get near the larger supercarrier and detonating the slip space bomb. However, it had been damaged and could no longer be set off in any way but manually. George knew somebody had to do it because a supercarrier kind of acts like a large aircraft carrier carrying fuel, more starcraft, etc., and destroying it would hurt the Covenant fleet badly. So he sacrificed his life to do it, and it worked. Moving on to number seven is Scooter's death in Tales from the Borderlands. Henderson's corpse got caught in a rocket. This caused the rocket to malfunction to the point where it was near explosion. Scooter and Fiona go out to fix it, because obviously they were in the ship it was attached to and didn't want to be blown up, However, Scooter gets stuck in it. He makes the choice to sacrifice himself, to have the rocket detach and obviously fly away where it cannot possibly harm anyone. And that's basically how it goes down. Fiona is pretty much devastated by this. Scooter's kind of a ham, but he's a really good person. And by this point in the game, it's a pretty big gut punch. Moving on to number six, in Assassin's Creed Origins, and if you've played this game, you know exactly where I'm going. You know what I'm talking about. A man named Hotefries was trying to find the identity of the crocodile. The crocodile was a member of the Order of the Ancients and controlled the Fayum, one of the regions that is in the game. Now, what the crocodile does in retaliation for attempting to find out their identity is tie stones to Hotefries' daughter Shadia's feet and drown her in a lake, which is... I mean, it's a tough one. 
you don't usually get a lot of kid death in games, and it's not quite as expected as perhaps almost any other death in a video game. And yeah, Hotefries is obviously pissed and sets about doing something about it, as I think just about anybody would. Moving on to number five, Morton Solis's death in Mass Effect 3, which if that one doesn't get you, I don't know what does. There's a lot of details involved, but the important ones are that Morton Solis basically believed in the genophage, which was a disease that was engineered to keep the Krogan from reproducing. However, his mind is changed and he believes that the self-determination of the Krogan is important. Through a series of events, he winds up curing them at the cost of his own life. I mean, you can go a different direction. You can not cure them and not kill him. It is Mass Effect, after all, where choices actually present themselves that allow you to change major things about the game. But his death is also the version of his character arc where he learns the most and develops the most. And basically, to avoid it is to basically stop him from learning and developing in some respects, which kind of also sucks. Mass Effect is a game that does make you consider consequences in a different way, I think. Coming in at number four, from Modern Warfare 3, Soap McTavish's death. His is one where he doesn't consciously choose death over letting others die. Instead, he just acts heroically and saves someone, Yuri specifically, in a manner that reopens a knife wound, that knife wound ultimately being what kills him. He dies from blood loss after saving Yuri, and the team dedicates the last mission to Soap as they suit up. Moving on to number three, in Metal Gear Solid 2, Hal Emmerich's stepsister had a long and complicated tale that culminated in her death during the course of the events of the game. Long story short, Emma got involved in a cracker team and working on the Arsenal Gear project, more or less, to prove her worth to Hal Emmerich, Otacon, in the Metal Gear universe. The whole reason she was there appeared to be for spite, but actually ultimately ended up not just because she wanted the respect of Otacon, but also that he see her as a woman. Now remember their stepbrother and stepsister, not real brother and sister, before you get too far into that. What ended up happening was as she was crossing the big shell, Vamp came up and stabbed her in the abdomen, which ultimately caused her to bleed out, even as the worm she created in order to handle everything was nearing its success. The characters found no cause for celebration. Hal even blamed himself for things he'd done well into their past that apparently had some degree of inspiration in her involvement. Number two in Red Dead Redemption 2, near the end of the game, not quite the end, there's still the epilogue after it, Arthur's horse gets shot and it is devastating. Because even after being begged to leave, he just sits there with the horse. He clearly has a connection to the animal and respect that he extends to few people. He pets its head and just quietly thanks the horse. And that was it, I was just done right there. It's honestly such a simple moment that I think when you first experience it, almost passes by until he says something and then it's just like, ouch. It's a game that's so well aware of the relationships that it cultivates between the player and the world of the game. And this moment is like the perfect demonstration of that. And finally, number one is the intro to Last of Us. The intro does a ton to just show you a normal, happy, domestic situation where Joel and his daughter, Sarah, have just a very nice, sort of playful and fun relationship. It's short and sweet, but it does the trick. So when things start to get disrupted, it's very immediately obvious that something is wrong. And as they attempt to flee the town they live in, because all hell is breaking loose, as the military begins a quarantine, they shoot Sarah. There's just no mercy. The whole thing immediately turns into a police state, as you find out during the course of the game. And this is a moment that does an incredibly large amount of the heavy lifting of the exposition in telling you exactly how dire the situation becomes and exactly how fast. But holy crap, it really hurts you to do it. What are some heartbreaking moments in games that you remember? There's certainly many, many of them throughout gaming's history. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. 
And if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.